Hmm, okay. Let's try to derive the MHD equation now. Hello, hello. Um, I don't have a camera yet, so... Yeah, fun. Mm, okay, cool. Let me see how this whole thing works. Wow. Wow, I can draw into the Cool, okay. Um, so, yeah, to derive MHD equations, um, let's first ask what are MHD equations. This is in context of uh, plasma physics again. So let's start with the whole plasma. What is a plasma? Well, it's a fluid-ish and it is a uh, electromagnetic-ish. And combining the two, you get um, this idea where you have a um, move down. or you have kind of a thing that goes like this and then they follow very specific equations um, including for example uh, let's say the fluid equations which are like continuity so this plus um we get some kind of other equations like the Maxwell's Some people use this notion, uh, notation. I um, some people use this notation. I like to use the top one just because it's faster to write. Um, okay. So del cross b equals negative n equals mu j plus mu. Epsilon times delta e. Okay, so Maxwell's equations. Um, and let me just check what other equations. I think probably momentum. Which is to say it is yeah I think it's this plus j cross b um, minus gradient of p plus I think Okay, so, so you have the momentum equation. Um, what else do you have? 
No, Ohm's law. So Ohm's law is J equals this E cross U cross B. Oops, not cross. Plus U cross B. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, there's a lot of different uh, equations that we're going into, um, but I think in general, um, here, here's one more uh, state equation. This is kind of like an energy equation. It is P over rho. Equals zero. Um, the top is pressure, and the bottom is the density. Um, and then you see that gamma. Um, that one is like just a factor. So, given these, um, it is possible to find some ways to simplify them in a way that it's still meaningful, but you'll be able to actually calculate something because these equations are really complicated. And all of these are um, in a sense what you call nonlinear. When they're nonlinear, um, some like small effect in one of these equations can cause like cascading chain, chain effect that like blows up all the other ones if you do something wrong. So, the idea is to find a way to make these um, uh, find find a way to make all of these. How do you say it? Like describe describe a consistent phenomena, but in a way that you can actually calculate things still and uh, find cool math properties where you can like probably flip them around turn them upside down all that stuff so to do this um let's go to mhd uh, which is one very particular way of dealing with it and this is actually what kind of set off um, modern plasma physics MHD uh, stands for Magnetohydrodynamics. Um, and as you can see, Magneto, it's magnet. Uh, hydro is like water, and dynamics is movement. So it's talking about, oh, imagine if plasma, instead of being like a bunch of different charged particles and different fields all that it's just a fluid and a very consistent singular fluid that is moving in a very specific way and that way um, we can apply a lot of these fluid equations a lot of these um, looking at a lot of these like big big kinds of changes so that they are um, uh, was it they describe kind of a system that looks really cool um, for example some uses that people have found for them um, is um, getting the uh, equilibrium or kind of like the stable magnetic configuration of a tokamak um, a tokamak uh, is a fusion device it's the one that is currently being developed all around the world for the future of energy generation. So Tokamax and um, another one called Stellarators. These things are very special because they're not just meant to do fusion. They can actually, um, they're actually really interesting in the sense that they are in some ways how people say um, we create perfect symmetry in the universe. Um, and then what we what what I mean by this is, we get a magnetic field, and then we actually for like first time in like the universe we 
try to make it in a way that the fields, the magnetic fields, like can loop back on themselves um, indefinitely. Um, so it's like it's so be, besides being a cool like uh, energy making device, it's also really interesting just as like a mathematical and almost like artistic object of its own. So you have like these really complicated fields, magnetic fields. They're just going in like kind of circle ish, but then they all like loop around in different ways. And eventually it creates a really, um, uh, a really nice looking topology. Um, okay, so to make the MHD equations, there's a few um, things that we want to do. Uh, let's start with um, the moment equations. So um, let's see. Okay, so let's let's just first say that. Uh, okay, let's let's see some definitions. So we want to get the ensemble of all of the different. Um, uh, how do you say it? Species inside the plasma. So plasma, a lot of like particles, whatever. You're trying to turn it into like a big single chunk of fluid. So let's call velocity um, for the fluid velocity equals the sum of the tr density and then times the species S um, times the velocity of the species. So now it's like, okay, you have, you have like different kinds of fluids going around inside, but then you add them together and then they become like this group. Or I don't want to say group velocity because that's another term, but it becomes a velocity of the plasma. All right. Okay, so that's velocity. Um, Okay, so now let's work go on to the continuity equation. Uh, let's scroll up a bit. So continuity equation is uh, um, based off the idea that um, you have a kind of a volume, um, and then things go inside, right? And then things come back outside. So it's saying that the change in things, oops, it's saying that the change in things going inside and outside is going to be essentially um, zero based on the time and the uh, amount of um, what you call flux. Um, here, flux. So what I mean by this is here, uh, imagine you have a kind of like a sheet here. Right? Um, and then you have something keep that keeps on going through. At a certain at a certain amount of time, the amount of things passing through this is going to be the same as the things that are actually hitting it. But you'll notice that um, in over time, if it's going through like this, it's going outside of the whatever this object is. So. From this, you can write that, uh, let's say for species again, so single single particle or a single type of thing. Um, you have d rho dt plus this equals zero. So that is, the, again, the continuity equation, which means that the things that are changing in time um, is also happening to be the things that are moving away um, across like some kind of surface. And this one is, uh, this one's like really, really important for just any kind of physics that involves um, a general kind of flow. And now that we have this, um, we can simply just combine all of these because we just 
some all of them across different species and you'll get very simply that this um, m plus equals zero. Cool. And now we just basically got the continuity equation. So this is going to be our first equation for MHD. And it's saying that like, like you have a bunch of different flows that that follow the same behavior, you can just add them up and it turns into one single flow that acts, acts like this. Um, okay. Let me close that off. Let's move on to the next thing, momentum. All right. Mm -hmm. Momentum. Okay, so the momentum equation is. Uh, actually, let me get rid of that. So the momentum equation is looking at change velocity plus this. Um, I just wrote this two times. It's you could say it's squared, but I'll just do that. Um, equals J cross B. Mm. It's my bad. This is a J. Minus del dot species p. This one's kind of long. <laughs> Plus over. Oh, let me ignore the sum first. Okay, so you have this. Um, and then we can derive this. We can all derive this later. So actually, uh, maybe I should have started with start um, even seeing, okay, what is a plasma and what are the equations for a plasma? But assuming that we already know the equations for plasma, like the very general ones, um, it's going to be this. And this is going to be called um, the mass continuity equation or not mass continuity, the momentum equation, which is saying that the momentum um, generally uh, in more basic um, physics, you'd say so, see something like this, dt of, uh, or momentum is conserved by p equals mv equals mv. So this is like the very um, beginner level thing. And then momentum is conserved, which means that, okay, so you have a mass kind of thing going on. And then you have a velocity. What's velocity? It's change in position. So in another sense, then you have what is um, m times dx dt. But now that you have a fluid element, when you're looking at this, this is density, which means that this is so it can change. So what you're actually looking at is v okay so to get this thing um what you would do is you you have this right so you take the partial derivative and you take the um you, you take the derivatives and then you end up you end up with okay dt of rho and times v but then plus um, delta dot or v delta dot rho and v and then you move that back in and then um, by this is not trivial um, this actually has to be derived a bit but move that back in move this in and then you get d rho v 
plus this row v v like that. Okay, so that's how you get the left hand side. Um, the whole idea generally for this is that you are again over here. Um, the reason why there's two separate um, terms for these is because when you take a derivative um, in in like our real world, we have four things that we need to take a derivative for. One is space and one is time. So taking derivative of t, um, well directly, you first take the derivative of something with respect to time, right? But then later you also have to get the partial. So it equals this times, what is it? Another d dt, but this time dx dx plus d dt dy dy dot 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 in one to one to three dimensions whatever so then you're left with this you can flip these around and get something like d dx dx dt which over here plus d dy dy dt okay so over here you'll see something interesting which is that d over dx and d over dy okay and dx over dt dy over dt these combine into what you call velocity terms so right dx over dt is velocity of x dy over dt equals velocity of y so you can rewrite this whole thing as a um well you have d of dx d, um, del of del y what does that become well that becomes this um and you just dot that with velocity and that's how you get this part so it's some derivative times um, derivative time time times derivative of velocity and generally like a lot of the equations you see even if they don't follow this exact format um, again this one needs special derivation um, when you integrate it but it'll generally follow this format where you see a time and a velocity that's split but then from that um, later you can do some simplifications which we'll do um, soon. Okay, so anyways, momentum. Um, mass for an uh, electric field, mass times some kind of like field thing, right? Uh, J cross B is another part. This, this, okay. So we have all these, and how do you simplify these? Oops. Let me zoom out a bit. Okay, so first let's add up all the species. Um, here. So, so these are um, base, base, base by base, uh, or basis by basis, different kinds of particles, right? But um, actually, um, in order to turn this into a MHD, and also since these do interact with each other, then you do have to sum over them. So. Um, summing over them looks like this. So you're adding all that over here. And this is here. Yeah. 
or this is the electric um, interaction. Um, pressure terms, and sum over another pressure terms. These are very bad looking summation, but these are supposed to be summation signs. Okay. Um, since the total momentum is conserved for any collision process, it follows that the collision term must sum to zero. In order to simplify the remaining terms, it is convenient to introduce a new uh, pressure tensor. Pressure tensor. Um, a tensor in this case um, is because let's say you have a small velocity minus V. Okay, so you already have a, oops, um, you already have two vectors, right? So then since you're multiplying the two vectors, it's gonna become a much higher dimension, which is gonna be a tensor. Um, so you're gonna have like interactions in a lot of different ways. Um, if this is a vector talking about like, oh, each state has this property, whatever, a tensor is gonna say that, oh, at each state, there's gonna be this property, this property, and this property in different direction. Um, but it's like more general than that, but that's kind of an example of what a tensor could look like. So it's like, imagine a dimen like high dimension, but even higher dimension. Um, Okay, um, let's say that this combined is going to be plus, plus, plus. over here and after you integrate them. So this is kind of like a um, initial or static pressure. Oh, let me see. And then this is kind of like that work, work done. Or, um, uh, where W is, um, what you say, like the relative or average velocity relative to the fluid. So you have the fluid here. Um, some parts of the fluid are here, some are here, some are going this way, but then, uh, so you compare it to the average of everything. And that way um, you can simplify this. So so this is actually W and then um, let me see, when you integrate this over, I think it should, no, 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 that's not it, no. Um, when you have this and then you integrate, this actually is going to be species minus this for like the very um general movement and this one is like on a more this one is going to be what is it across okay so so v here this thing and this thing are two different things um this and this this and this are same thing but this and this are different this is uh talking about the individual individual particles. So that's why you later have to integrate it. Um, but once you integrate it, you'll get something like this. All right, cool. So um, you're gonna end up with kind of like a term that looks like this after you do the integration and combine it. And from this, um, you can Combine the terms at the end. So from here, combined with this, it will create um, another writing of the, the equation.
Okay, so if you, if you can see over here, this comes from the sum of all the other ones, right? But then they also add in a work term. So here, here. Um, so you're not only gonna have this um, minus PL, but you're also gonna have plus dot MS. Yes. Okay, so you're gonna have this too. Um, I do want to note that over here, this part, does um, go to, uh, how do you say it? It does go away. And the reason why this goes away, um, so why this part goes away, is because this is um, imagine what this is asking. It's saying, okay, what's the sum of all the small? So these um, the when you see little delta, this means like kind of a small step process. Um, and then every time you have a p um, change in p, it's like kind of change in momentum, right? So it's kind of coll collision. Well, what's a what's a really famous uh principle again uh, almost actually we we even like kind of um described it before and this is uh conservation of momentum so anytime like something hits anytime these particles hit each other momentum is going to be transferred but overall in the system mv mv um and then it'll become m2 v2 but then M3, M3, four. the thing you'll see is that this and this combined will be the same. So if you add that up over like the whole plasma, um, the idea is that all of the collisions added up together, the momentum is always going to stay the same. So you're not going to change any momentum in general when you add them all up. So then this actually equals zero. So that's why you don't see this term anymore. And then, yeah. And then as for this term over here, this one does go to become this one. Okay. Um, so now we have that. Uh, let's substitute us uh, for species wise equals ws or not u let's say v vs equals this plus v so it's saying that this is like the deviation and then deviation from the standard and this is the standard well okay if you do that then this is going to be what ws plus v and uh, this is going to be ws plus v squared right and you have all that you're gonna have a, um, a much longer equation um, which does uh, which is basically this split into two and then this is split into um, let's say three terms Four. Yeah, four terms, uh, because you want to apply the. Um, Was it just literally factoring out? So like a plus b squared, or yeah, a plus b squared equals a square plus two ab plus b. Okay. Um, Okay, so from that, uh, I'm not gonna write exactly that equation down, but you get the idea. This one, then you can simplify this more um, since this times this equals zero. Because um, the idea again is that this um, is W is going to be the relative to the average, right? So 
the sum of the sum of like deviations okay so so you have a bunch of different deviations from the average but adding them all together then it should form the average so when you add them together then it should be zero so okay so this is going to be zero then um, every, basically all the terms that you see that have a w in it here over here goes to zero 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 whatever and you are left with And keep in mind this v that i'm using is going to is the general fluid velocity it's not a individual particle velocity v times v plus okay so that And then on the other side, it's going to be very uh, messy again. It's like the thing on the top. Okay, so now that you have all this. You can put them into this like really long equation get rid of all the w's and you're going to be left with this Okay, cool. Well, so this is much simpler than what we had before with all these different terms, all these huge summations, all these, um, like uh, the E, J cross B. Okay, we still have that. Like, but this gradient of, what is it? Or divergence of the sum and then the sum of all the different uh, deviations and then all of like the small movements on the left. All of that is just simplified to this, which is way easier to read. And in fact, we can also say that um, we can actually rewrite this a little bit too, to make it a little easier. So this, this you're assuming is going to be the same, right? So you can just take this out constant and then you're left with a t of v plus v dot and v which was the thing i was talking about above um i might have to do a proof on that sometime um uh, equals pqe plus j cross b minus all that p okay so cool now you have that and then this is going to be the momentum equation. So this one was very complicated, but um, I hope this one kind of got across. Uh, what's also nice is a lot of times in MHD, you can also kind of ignore this term because you don't really have the electric field or the electric field's much weaker than the effect of the magnetic field. So now you simplify it even more. All right. Let us continue with next part. Okay, so we have all this, we have all this. Okay, let's do a Ohm's law. Ooh, this one's gonna be very long. Okay, yeah, uh, yeah, I'm not gonna do the Ohm's law. That thing's a little bit too long, but, um, Let me let me just see if there's a way to s summarize this. Okay. 
Okay, so, okay, so, so I see. Okay, so, a lot of the Ohm's law is, um, what is it? Let's just start Ohm's law over here. Mm, let me extend this a bit more. So Ohm's law is um, saying that J equals this E plus U cross B. Um, what is this going to be? Um, the whole concept coming from this is that um, over here, this is the conductivity term, sigma. And you want to see like what happens to this, right? Because when you have like plasma that goes goes across here, they have like resistance within each other. They interact. So how would this um, how would this affect the conductivity for like the whole thing? And the idea is to apply the um, MHD or the M not not this one. Uh, but yeah, you can do continuity. But the idea is to apply the momentum equations actually um, into here. And from that, um, let me see where it will say. From that essentially, you'll get that um, the conductivity will follow um, almost a, a Debye relation, I think. Yeah, yeah. So here, it, it can be derived that this one, so oops, not that. Um, so it can be derived that one over conductivity equals resistivity. Okay, so this is resist and then this is conduct so this equals this but this equals m v over n e squared and after you derive that then uh the Essential idea is that okay, so sigma is gone, and then this thing you can actually later move out. Uh, you can kind of like move this to the J part of it, so you have something like E plus V cross B. minus j over sigma right um from from rearranging the equations a bit equals one over e n j cross b minus one over e n delta p which is coming from the momentum equation and when you're crossing with j itself and then plus a lot of other different terms but after a lot of these calculations um uh very really deep into it you'll uh, eventually see that e plus v cross b equals Simply one over sigma j and j equals mj. And this is why I said, okay, after all this derivation, like honestly, I don't really think it's too necessary unless like you really need to know how to derive this to know like what this is because in the end, Everything kind of just recombines into itself. 
and it literally is just you taking the sigma and then putting it at the bottom i mean of course the math is way harder because like this this isn't scalar these are all tensors so this is kind of like some like some n dimensional thing this is n dimensional whatever but after you do everything it's going to just end up like literally like this and this is called resistive ohm so the resistive form of ohm's law yeah. um what i said before with the equation of state also applies um generally um so equation of state is going to be that equation you see over here state um oops uh so these two basically are like the same exact equations after you apply the mhd ideas to it uh, and then finally you're gonna be left with okay this is the most important the mhd equations these are called the resistive mhd equations in the complete set so one L cross B equals mu J. Okay, so this is coming from Maxwell's law, right? Maxwell's laws or whatever. Del cross B equals negative dt of B. Um, delta E is not important. Um, because E is going to later disappear. So, uh, delta T, okay, so, let me just, let me just put this in action. Yeah, delta E equals mu over whatever. But this is not going to be used. So, 2 is going to be mass continuity, which we got was... Okay, and then you, we also have J cross B minus delta P. You might be wondering what happened to the other term, um, the V dot um, grad V. Uh, the thing is that usually this is talking about like a change in a change of velocity. So imagine velocity times acceleration um, for something that is like kind of slow moving and uh, going similar ish direction so there's honestly not that much contribution for any of these um and that's why these can usually go to zero okay i lied no no, 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 I, I completely lied for this. This is a later approximation. Um, actually, let's just write this out here. DTT of V, okay, good. So, okay, so 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 what, what we're doing is uh, combining combining these two into a single term, which is D, DT. Um, and then remember, D over DT equals plus S. Okay. So, oops. Um, so, so that that's a combination. It just makes it easier to read. Um, yeah, I was kind of weirded out by like why why that assumption could be made because this is supposed to be like the full set, like the very complete set. Um, Okay, so you're left with these equations. Um, you can actually even combine a few of these. Okay, so I want to say that, so these are the final equations. Um, so these are called the resistive MHD. Um, but you can actually combine a few of these. 
for example, um, uh, let's say that this actually becomes zero. So this is the non-resistive, right? So non-resistive. Then what you can do is you can say that E equals V cross B. And then you can say, get, get this one. Um, DTB plus no cross E. Oops, no. Okay, so e equals negative e cross b. Um, since you move this to the other side, um, equals negative del cross v cross b. All right. So you remove an equation, so that's good. Mm. And um, another one you could do is oh j. So you have mu j, right? What's a j? Because you're not really ever going to encounter it. Well, you can just take the mu, move it here, and you will have this d d t of v equals 1 over mu del cross b cross b minus delta p. And then, okay, good. So now you just basically, and then del dot b equals zero is kind of self-identifying. No interaction would be. So now you're, uh, you just got rid of these, got rid of these equations, and you're left with a much simpler um, group. Is there any other simplifications we can make? I do not think so. I think that is the most common that you can get. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it for getting the MHD equations. Um, let's just do one more thing, which is getting the frozen field approximation, because this is always important to do. So frozen field It's kind of saying that the idea of like the f magnetic flux through a curve, no matter like how weird the shape becomes, it's gonna be the same. So it's kind of like frozen. So this one, um, you'll have to use a bit of Stokes theorem. And what you'll see is that from this, uh, so so Stokes theorem. Um, just quick context is talking about um, the relation between volume and flux. So whatever is coming outside of this area is going to be what's leaving this volume. So um, from this, a lot of the different um, uh, derivations you can do to um the even the resistive mhd equations uh especially the concept of this one um not resistive uh the non-resistive ones so this one uh what you would do is you Take that and apply it to another idea, which is that flux is conserved. So this is saying that, oops, I just realized I cropped out a bit. Okay. Okay, so this is the flux in this case is going to be 
what is it the amount of things passing out of a area right and then also the amount of things coming out of the bounding and that is what these two are saying it's the curl in the area well anyways after you combine all of these combine these two you're gonna get an interesting thing which is that essentially the magnetic field like given whatever configuration um, as long as like the flux is the same through kind of like different points the field is going to try to accommodate for it so you can have something that's like that's shaped like this and and, uh, and the field is going to always going to start and end the same meaning that everywhere in the middle it's also going to be the same now this is really important in a way that when we're trying to control for the magnetic fields later on we want them to kind of have a pattern that is uh, uh, identifiable so or, or not even control for it like you can see this in nature all around like uh, the sun and um, this one uh, I do want to get into later in the future because it is pretty important I think but uh, yeah so uh, let me see in summary you start off with Maxwell's equations momentum ohms state whatever uh, and then you do a bunch of derivation and then you find out that you can combine all of these individual terms into single big terms um, this applies um, to finding just like jet very general movements or general uh, magnetic um, whatever of plasma and eventually you're gonna get these simplified um, MHD terms um, the ones in the box on the left are the resistive so these are pretty much like the complete MHD terms that to memorize and then the one on the right is kind of a little more of a simplification that um, is commonly used um, we haven't gone into relativistic terms yet but um, it's kind of in this similar vein um, and then from this you get the idea from um, you can derive from this um, given the flux that uh, you have this idea of a frozen field approximation all right cool okay i am ending stream and i'll see if this can upload to youtube